Hi, and welcome to this short video where we're going to look at exam command words for A-level or AS biology. Uh, now, these are really, really important that you understand, especially if you're coming into a period of assessment, which I'm sure many of you are. Um, so we're going to look at describe, explain, evaluate, and suggest. And these are the major types of question that you're going to encounter in biology. So let's get into it. Here's a little starter question for you. So here, a question that you might get is explain the shape of this graph over on the right. Now, which answer do you think is the best? Okay, here are three, two answers, sorry. Uh, which one do you think is better? Pause the video, have a think. Okay, so this one, the answer that is best is number two, because number two explains the shape of the graph and doesn't describe it. Number one is a describing, uh, the shape or the pattern of the graph, and number two is an explaining why the graph has that shape. So that's one key mistake that students often make, is they describe a graph and don't explain it, or they do the opposite if the question's asking the other way around. So let's get into the meaning of these major uh, command words in biology. First of all, we've got describe. Uh, so a describe question basically just says, say what you see. If it's about a graph, then, um, and especially if it's like a three marker, then you should definitely include data from the graph. So say, you know, at what point it levels off, for example. Um, so here are some examples. Describe the pattern shown by a graph. Describe what happens to white light. These are kind of more general science-y ones. Uh, describe things you might see. Describe your journey to school. Describe the difference between speed and velocity, or I don't know, if you were doing A-level biology. Describe the process of ultrafiltration. okay? So that's describe. Next one. Explain. Now explain is give the reasons behind something. Now this could be a three marker or a four marker. If it was a three mark question, you should, you should kind of link three points um, in a kind of chain of logic. So A causes B, which causes C. Uh, for example, these are some general science ones. Explain how heat travels in a solid. You sort of explain conduction by talking about the movement of particles and so on. Uh, or maybe you could talk about explain the formation of tissue fluid would be an AS biology example where you'd have to talk about oncotic pressure and hydrostatic pressure and, and you know what's happening at each end of the capillary. So that's an explain. Evaluate. Evaluate is about weighing things up. So um, quite often these are six markers. And if you got a six mark evaluate question, you'd wanna give positive and negative things about a statement or an experiment and come to a conclusion. Generally speaking, if it's a six marker, you might wanna give three positive, three negative, and, and, or maybe four positive and four negative, um, just to be sure. Now often, often, especially at A-level biology, they ask you to evaluate the conclusion that a student has made. Um, and in this case, generally the conclusion is like, okay, but needs a lot of work. So if you get asked to evaluate conclusion, normally it'll be, you know, one thing positive or two things positive about the conclusion, and then maybe four things sort of negative, maybe two things about the method that weren't very good and two things about the analysis of the data that weren't very good or, or something like that. Okay, so that's evaluate. Some examples down below. Um, finally, we have suggest. Now, suggest is where you, it's kind of a guess, really, um, but it's an educated guess. Now, normally, you have to find something that, some information that you've been given in the question is going to give you a clue. Uh, and you may also be asked to kind of suggest and explain, so explain why you answered this way. Now, I've got an example of suggest here, because I've got a top tip for you. Uh, if I just go to this old paper, which I've got here. So here's a suggest question. Suggest why chromista need pigments that are different from those of other photosynthetic organisms. So this is an A-level, a year, sort of second year of A-level type question on photosynthesis. But the, the tip uh, applies for many suggest questions. So I want you to, to kind of remember this one. So if you get a suggest question, especially if it's at the end of a long question down here, you need to go back to the top of the question. So in this page here, you just have to go all the way back up here and read the top there. But sometimes when it's a long question, you might even need to turn back a page or two pages in, in, the, in the paper to find the start of the question. And at the start of the question, often you get given some information. So quite often these suggest questions are about kind of new information that you've been given about some organism that you wouldn't necessarily have studied in detail, but, they, but you wanna use that information. So here, 
Chromista are photosynthetic protists that live in water. Now, because they live in water uh, and water absorbs light, um, that is why they need different um, pigments than other photosynthetic organisms, because red light does not travel very far in water and it gets absorbed. So that the type of wavelength of light is different. OK, let's go back to the examples. Now, what I would like you to do uh, next is I would like you to try and find some examples of these questions. Um, so look through your past papers that you've done. Maybe look through some ones that you've done uh, with me or some ones you've done in, in class. Um, with my students, I use OneNote, so I ask them to kind of look through their OneNote and find some examples. I want you to find at least one or two examples of each type of question that you've done in a past paper. How did you do? Did you understand the command word? Uh, and kind of just sort of, you know, is there a, a pattern there? Is, is it one of these types of questions that is kind of messing you up? OK, pause the video or you can do it later uh, and have a go at that. OK, hope, hope you found some examples. Now, you might have noticed when you're looking at your past papers that there are a few other types of questions that sometimes come up as well. You get these things as well. You get identify or name. And really, that's just give the name of something. Uh, for example, identify the stage of mitosis shown in a picture, and that could be metaphase. You get outline, um, maybe outline, you know, outline the stages of ultrafiltration. Uh, and that's like give the major bullet points, a bit like taking a question that could be a six marker and then condensing it just to give the three or four points. So it's basically, it's the same as describe really, but um, you, you might be phrased as outline. Compare and contrast. Um, this is an important one. We're going to spend a bit of time on this later on. Um, but this is make direct comparisons between two different processes. Now, what you don't want to do is describe everything about the first process and then describe everything about the second process. For example, if it said compare and contrast the processes of transcription and translation, you might write a sentence like this. Transcription and translation both use complementary base pairing. That's one mark. However, transcription takes place in the nucleus, but translation occurs in the cytoplasm at the ribosome. That's the second mark. And then you'd go on to get, to get more marks in the sixth marker, for example. OK, so let's play with these um, definitions a bit now. I'm going to give you the answer, but I want you to think about what type of question was asked. OK, so you've got four choices. You've got describe, explain, evaluate or suggest. So let's get into it. See how many you get right. So first, here's the answer. You would add Benedict's reagent and place in a water bath at 95 degrees C. The colour would change from blue to brick red. By the way, these are all about AS biology, all these examples. So if you're in year 12, you can still do this. So, which one do you think it is? Yes, that one is a describe. Um, but what would be the question? Pause the video and have a think. Could you write a question that would have this as the answer? Okay, here it is. Here's my, my, uh, my question. Describe the test for reducing sugar. Let's do some more. Next one. This is because the solution has a higher water potential than the erythrocytes, and water moves into them by osmosis, causing them to burst. Well, that's an explain. Uh, now, thinking about the question is quite tough on this one. I'll give you a second, pause the video if you want to go. It is a tough one. So this one is explain why the blood becomes clearer when pure water is added. This is a kind of experiment thing. Sometimes if you add pure water to, a, to, a, to some blood, um, the pure water causes the blood cells to pop and then it kind of becomes a bit clearer as opposed to cloudy because all the cells are bursting. To do with osmosis and AS content. Next one. It could be more difficult to provide medical care for non-habituated gorillas. Well, that's a suggest, isn't it? Because it could be. So that's a suggest one. But what would be the actual question? Have a think. Pause the video. This one is, the, one, is uh, one that some students in my class just recently dis did, and it was suggest the disadvantage of having non-habituated gorillas in the population. So why is it kind of bad to have wild gorillas that aren't used to humans in a reserve? Next one. It is true that as light intensity increased, so did the rate of photosynthesis. However, this effect was only shown up to a point. Have a think, pause the video, or type. Now, this would be an evaluate, but what would be the question? Um, it's kind of based on an experiment and a conclusion to give you a clue. Pause the video and have a go if you want. 
Okay, so the question here would be something like, evaluate the student's claim that their data proves that increasing light intensity increases photosynthesis in plants. That is a very kind of standard type of evaluate a conclusion question because it's, you know, sort of right. There is a bit of truth to this. However, that you can't just say that it is always true because you can't increase the light intensity, you know, forever and ever and ever and keep getting more photosynthesis. It's not true. It will plateau. And also, can you really just base, um, can you say in all plants based on one experiment? Of course not, because you'd have to test multiple species. Let's do another one. This one is about a experiment that you might have done in year 12, potentially. So this one would be, um, it's kind of, I can see why you might say a suggest, but I think it's an explain, because it would be explain how something affects. There's a clue for the question. Think about the question, pause the video. Here it is. Explain how not rinsing the discs for one temperature value might affect the value for absorbance that you then measure in the colorimeter. This is all about um, one of the PAGs, one of the assessed practicals that we do, which is about the beetling leaking out of the vacuole um, of beetroot cells uh, when you raise the temperature of the cells. Another one. Farmers might object to beaver re reintroduction as some of their land close to rivers could be flooded, leaving crop losses. What do you think? Well, the clue is might, so it's probably suggest. But what would be the question? Here we go. Suggest an economic reason farmers might object to beaver reintroduction. So that's an economic reason. Okay, two more, stick with me. Here, the resting glucose concentration prior to eating was 90 milligrams per milliliter, but rose to 180 milligrams per milliliter within one hour of eating a bag of Haribo. This is an increase of 100%. That's the answer, but what type of question is this? You might've got it, that one's a describe, but what type of question would this be? Because if you can think about what the question would be. Okay. So this would probably be something about um, reading from a graph. So describe the change shown in the graph, and then it might say use processed data. So that's something else that can come up as an exam technique point. If it says use processed data, it basically means you need to do some maths. You've got to do some maths with the numbers, not just say it goes from this to this, but say the percentage increase or something like that. Normally it's percentage increase. Final one here. Here's the start of an answer. Both the molecules are polymers, but one is a polymer of glucose and the other is a polymer of amino acids. They are both fibrous molecules and their main function is to give support and strength. Have a think. Now it's a kind of a trick one because that's what we haven't looked at yet. That is a compare and contrast. But what am I asking you to compare and contrast? If that's the answer, what am I asking you to compare and contrast? Think if, see if you can get the question. So that would be uh, something like this, compare and contrast the structure and functions of cellulose and collagen. So for the last section of this video, we're gonna look at this type of question, compare and contrast, six marker. So here's an example of one that I've done in a previous video. So titan is a fibrous protein, pepsin is a globular protein. Compare the properties and functions of fibrous and globular proteins in the human body. So in a previous video, I've gone through this, so I'm just gonna kind of show you my, my sort of uh, my thought process. When I'm working on a question like this, uh, first of all, I need to sort of take apart the question. The question asks me to look at properties and functions of fibrous and globular proteins. So I kind of draw a grid here, uh, you know, with properties here, functions here, fibrous and globular, and I kind of fill in the grid. And that can enable me to make direct comparisons. So for example, um, um, fibrous proteins tend to be insoluble, whereas um, globular proteins tend to be soluble. Fibrous proteins tend to have a repeating amino acid sequence, whereas globular proteins have a variable amino acid sequence and so on. So making direct comparisons. So this point here versus this point here, this point here versus this point here, and so on. So let's practice some of these questions. I want you to do this with me. Here are a bunch of different Compare and contrast style questions that I just thought of. Okay, I haven't written them out in full, but you know, comparing and contrasting, let's say mitosis and meiosis, or the synapse and the release of insulin. Now the questions in blue refer to the year 12 content, 
So if you're a 12 student, you can you can pick some of those. The question in red refer to you would have to cover the year 13 content as well. Okay, so but you could come up with more. These this is just a start. You could probably come up with loads more uh, and plan some of them. So I'd like you, if you want to, to try and plan some of these. Pick four to plan, and one easy, which you find quite easy to get started, two medium, and one which you think is really hard. And I'm going to show you how to plan one. So here I'm going to plan this one, uh, and I'm going to plan one, a kind of an easy one to get us going. I'll do mitosis versus meiosis. And the way that I kind of plan this is I have two little bubbles like this, and then I kind of mind map off um, you know, things about mitosis and meiosis. And you might sort of, uh, if you want to, you can put sort of similarities in the middle. So mitosis and meiosis both go kind of IP mat, interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, they both have that structure. Uh, but meiosis is one division. And uh, mitosis is two divisions. And you keep going like that. I've added a few more things there. Now, sometimes the, the challenge here, um, if you think the processes are very different, the challenge can sometimes be coming up with enough similarities. So we need to try and expand on this idea. So maybe IP mat here, that's one. We could add in further things. We can add in, you know, sort of stuff like spindle fibers. Uh, you know, we could talk about centrioles. Um, they both involve centrioles, um, you know, they both involve, well, and we could also talk about, you know, for example, um, meiosis two second cell division is quite similar. So we could split meiosis into meiosis two and meiosis one. And we could say that in meiosis one, we're separating, um, we're separating the homologous chromosomes like maternal chromosome one and paternal chromosome one, we separate the chromosomes, where in meiosis two, we separate the chromosome itself by splitting the two chromatids, um, which is very similar to mitosis. So mitosis is similar to meiosis two. So we kind of mind map it like that. And then we would list out the similarities and differences, okay? And if you plan it like that, then you should be able to tackle any of these questions that, uh, that you come across. Here's one final one for the year 13 students amongst you. This is comparing a year 12 concept on the left, which is the formation of tissue fluid, with a year 13 concept on the right, which is um, ultrafiltration at the glomerulus. So you could think of similarities and differences here. And this is a real question that's come up in the past exam. So uh, if you'd like to, see if you can write down some similarities and differences. Pause the video, and then I'll give you the mark scheme as provided by the exam board. So. Are you ready? The exam board said uh, these were similarities and these were differences. Okay. Um, did you get some of those? Do you think you could write um, a six mark answer based on those bullet points and kind of fit it into continuous prose? Remembering to directly make direct similarities and direct differences uh, when you're comparing and not just to describe one process and to describe the other. Okay, so that was a little... A uh, quick session on exam technique. I hope you found it useful and good luck preparing for any assessments that are coming up. Bye-bye.